can't say I'm surprised. God is good, amen? I'm so honored to be here this morning amongst the beautiful women of Texas. I've only had the honor of being in one district, so I don't know many of you, but I'm so honored to be here and to be able just to share my heart this morning. Um, and I want to take the time to honor Sister Sheree this morning and all the, all the board members' uh, wives um, for just, and for the board members especially, just for their vision for this time for the young ladies, amen, just for believing in us and giving us the opportunity just to share our hearts. And, and I come from a very, very small town. I call it the, tr the truck stop of Eloy. <laughs> I come from the middle of nowhere, and, I, and I've come to tell you that, that if you will place yourself in the hands of God, you will place your life in the hands of God. If you will say, God, it's not about where I'm from, obviously. It's not about who I am, obviously. It's about how much I'm willing to surrender. Here I am, God. And this morning, if you would open your Bible with me to Genesis chapter 37. brothers that they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many colors that was on him. Then they took him and cast him into a pit, and that pit was empty, there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat a meal, then they lifted their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels, bearing spices, balm, and myrrh, on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, what profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brothers listened. Then midnight traders passed by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. For the next couple of moments, I would like to speak on the topic, born for more. Turn to your neighbor and say, I was born for more. You may take your seat. So we see the life of Joseph. Joseph was a young man with big, great dreams. He was a man, uh, he was, he had 11, or he had at the time 10 siblings. He was probably not the favorite. He was, he had a lot of competition in his house, but from a very young age, the Lord calls Joseph. From a very young age, the Lord begins to show Joseph favor. From a very young age, I think Joseph began to understand that he was born for something different than his brothers. He began to understand that there was a special calling upon his life. I don't know if there's anybody in this place that you don't know what is happening in your mind, you don't know what is happening in your heart, but you know that you are born for more. You know that there is a calling of God upon your life. And maybe you have not been able to understand it yet. Maybe other people don't see it, just as Joseph's brothers did not see it. And you talk about these big dreams that you have, and your youth group kind of says, well, that's cool. Uh, yeah, right, that's cool. And you, you have these desires. Perhaps you have the desire to speak. Perhaps you have the desire to lead a friendship group. Perhaps you have the desire to lead the praise team. You have all these dreams and all these desires, but nobody else sees it. I want to tell you this morning that big dreams always begin with people that God calls that perhaps they have the means to bring these dreams to pass. God calls people that are not equipped. God calls people that no one else can see, but God chooses what he wants to use because it doesn't matter what other people see. It doesn't matter what other people think. God calls. He called David, the youngest of his brothers. God calls It doesn't matter. 
together and get married. That's awesome. You know, that God placed those desires there. It's not a bad thing. Sometimes we're so stuck there. But I get married on the now, what if you never get married? Are you never going to have anything for God?
to stop you from figuring out who you are right now. Because if he can get you right now, he doesn't have to worry about you later. If he could stop you right now, he will stop everything that God has for you in the future. Almost three years ago, I had the opportunity to go to Africa. And I was so excited. I went to Sister Vanessa. Oh, and I was so excited. The very smart group of us that went the first year. And it was a dream come true. No, that's not even true, because I never even dreamed of going to Africa. No, that's not even true. That was like, you know, I was so excited. And I remember being there and commission with the beautiful women of Africa. The, the church is thriving, and there's just people so hungry for God. And the last day, we would testify, or we would, we would minister to the women in the morning, and the men would minister to the men, and the pastors would minister to the pastors. Kind of like a convention, you know? Kind of right now. So everyone would kind of minister to the, to the people. But in the afternoon, they would, um, we would go and testify in the markets. We would put up the platform, put all this music, and just like begin to preach in the market. It was beautiful. And people would come, and people were healed. People were set free from demons. It was amazing. But the last day, uh, the director, Brother Mingo, he said, Sister Rebecca, tonight in the market, I want you to testify. And I was like, oh, wow. That's crazy. Like, I don't know. No, I had testified with the sisters. I was like, you know, but in the market, that was different. That was scary. And I was like, okay. You know, wow, wow. So I'm thinking, I'm, I'm standing there thinking, like, what am I going to say? You know, I'm so excited. But what am I going to say? And, you know, I have a lot to testify about. God has been good. But I, I was trying to get my thoughts together. Before I went up, Brother Miko comes up to me and tells me, Sister Becky, do you know why I asked you to testify tonight? And I said, no, Brother, I, you know, I have no idea. <laughs> and he tells me, Sister Becky, three and a half years ago, or three years ago, I had a vision of this place. I saw that platform. I saw these people. I saw what's happening right now. I saw it. Three years ago. And in that dream, in that vision, I saw you testify. He said, I didn't see your face, but I saw your hair. <laughs> but in that moment, the Lord took me back to a night three and a half years before. A night in which my, my life was falling apart. Where I had felt so abandoned by God. A time in my life where I did not want to pay this price. And I remember calling, I moved away from home for school, and things were going really bad. And all around me, things were falling apart. And I, I called my mom that night, she knew me before how everything was going. And I remember hanging up the phone that night. I was on my way home from work. I told the Lord, God, my life is yours. I will live for you the rest of my days. I'll go to church. I'll do the usual. But if the price of doing more is this high, I can't do it. If the price of my calling is this high, I can't. I tried. I did what I could. Obviously, I so God, I'll live for you. And that's it. I can't do this. I hung up the phone that night. I went to bed. I uh, kind of continued on. God took care of my situation. But God took me back in that moment. I had forgotten about that night. When the Lord, when the brother told me, I saw you in this vision three years ago. It's almost like God was telling me, face to me. If you would just hold on, I'll take you to the nation. If you would just allow me to take you and break every dream you've ever had of mine. If you would just allow me to take you through this process, I'm going to use your life. The cost of the calling is often very high. That's why we don't have tons of women. That's why we don't have thousands of women in line to speak. That's why we don't have thousands of 
wants a woman in line to be past your wife. That's why we don't want these things that have happened because the price of the calling was often very high. Joseph had to be rejected by his entire family. He had to be sold into slavery. Can you imagine what that feels like? And then when things were going okay, he sent to prison. And I can imagine Joseph thinking, God, what are you doing? What did I do wrong? All I did was dream. Is it so bad to dream? You gave me the dream. But God needed to take him through this process because God had a purpose. God needed someone in the and he chose Joseph. God needed someone in the palace and he chose Esther. God needed someone in the palace and he chose David. But first, he had to break them. First, he had to break their will. situation. 
simply calling me for mom. I don't want this to be another NYA where I come. Things don't change, God, but I want more. Thank you. 